Hello everybody! In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up the storage feature on your router, how to configure FTP, media and print server on a router with a USB port, and also how to connect a printer to the router and make it accessible within your network. If you need to recover deleted data, view or restore removed browsing history, Hetman Software Products will help you. Follow the link in the description, download the necessary program for free, install it and analyze the disk. The utility will show you the data you can recover, so you will be able to view it or get it back. In our channel and blog you will find solutions to any problem, from installing an operating system or configuring it to fixing possible bugs and errors or optimizing mobile gadgets. Our specialists will answer any questions you ask in your comments under the videos or articles. Most present-day routers featuring a USB port can be configured to use a number of additional functions. For example, by connecting an external storage, for example a hard disk, you can build your own server to keep videos, photos and other files. By configuring the storage sharing feature, you will be able to access the files on such disk from any computer or mobile device within your network. And when you connect a printer to your router, any device within this network will be able to print out documents. Such connection lets you print from any device connected by Wi-Fi and sparing you the efforts of untangling all those wires and cables. Let's begin with storage sharing and configuring an FTP server. For starters, find out if your router has a USB port. If it does, you can move on to configure an FTP server and arrange access from the local network and internet to files inside the local storage device. In fact, it is very convenient, and as soon as you try it, you'll ask yourselves, how could I live without it before? By the way, you can access the files in your storage not only from the local network, but also remotely, from anywhere on the Internet. All you need to know is the external IP address you obtain from your Internet provider. This way, you will be able to access your files in the external hard disk connected to the router from virtually anywhere as long as you have an internet connection. I will show you all the settings with the example of this router, TP-Link Archer C20. Connect a hard disk or USB drive to the router and open its settings. Make sure the router is turned on. Open any browser and type the router address, you can see it on the special sticker. Give the default name and password, admin and admin. Go to the tab USB settings storage sharing. In this page, you can configure the USB drive connected to the router. You will also see properties of the shared device, that is, share name, path, user access rights and status. Click Enable to turn on shared access to a storage device. When you see the drive is connected, move on to the tab FTP Server. By default, it should be turned on, and if it isn't, just click on Enable. After the drive is connected to the router, a directory with the name Volume will be created by default, providing access to all files in such drive. By default, this means access to the entire drive with administrator rights. That is, the FTP server is running and you can access the drive from any device connected to this network. To do it, use your computer to start the Windows Explorer and follow the address given in the settings on the right, where the directions are given. You need to give the username and password to be granted access. This is the same data you had to enter when trying to open the router settings. The default values – admin and admin. Open the Windows Explorer on your computer and go to the address specified in the router settings. If the address is correct, you will be requested to enter the username and password. When you log in successfully, you will see the files stored on this USB drive or external hard disk connected to the router. All these files will be displayed in the Volume folder. Here, you can also create new folders and copy your files there. View the available files and add new. To save yourself the trouble of having to type the address in the Windows Explorer all the time, create a network drive. Open the File Explorer and select Map as Drive. 
In the window that appears, copy the network drive address into the folder field, click Browse, confirm your choice of the folder and click Finish. The folder containing files will appear at once. If the system asks you for a password, enter it. The network drive will be displayed in the File Explorer when you click on this PC and you will be able to access the drive in no time. If you are using a mobile device, you need to connect to your router's network and use a file manager to access the network drive. Download any file manager software, for example, ES File Explorer. If you have an Android phone or a tablet PC, you can use this file manager to open a folder in your local network. But the first thing you need is to connect to your network by Wi-Fi. After that, install the application from Google Play Store. Start the application, open the menu, go to Network, LAN, and you will see the network address of the folder. Tap on it and you will see the volume folder with all of its files. If you go to LAN and there is nothing to display, tap Scan, and all network devices within this network should appear. Now just select the device you want to connect to. You may see a window asking you for the login and password to proceed with connecting. Now you can do many things right from your phone view, delete and copy new files, create new folders, and so on. The following settings are not obligatory and you only need them if you want to set up access for certain users with different access rights. First of all, several accounts can be created. For example, a guest account, which cannot have full access to the drive but only to a specific folder and with certain rights only. With read-only access, such account will not be permitted to modify files. For starters, let's create a user. In the router settings, open the tab USB settings, user accounts. The default user account is admin. In order to create a new one, fill in the fields below. Choose an index for the new user. Give a username. Enter the password and then re-enter it for confirmation. Click Set, and the new user will appear in this table. You can also enable, disable, delete or edit a user account. Now let's go back to the tab FTP Server. In this tab you will see a table which contains, by default, one network storage volume. This way access is permitted to the entire drive, that is, its root folder. If you want, you can create one more folder, access to which would be granted to a particular user or group of users with certain rights. Otherwise, you can modify access rights to the entire storage device for a certain user account. Let us create one more shared item by selecting Add new folder. In the field Share name, type the folder name and click Browse. Select your drive and specify the necessary folder. Please note that you cannot select a folder if its name is given in letters other than Latin. If that's your case, you will have to rename it. After you have chosen the folder, you can configure authorization access for a certain user account. Check the necessary options in the table next to the user account name. You have three variants to choose from – full access, read only, no access then click Apply. The chosen folder will appear in the table and you can see access rights from every user account. You can configure the user access to each folder by clicking the Edit button. Media Server In this page, you can configure the media server. To do that, plug an external USB hard disk drive or USB flash drive into the router. Click the Enable button to start the media server. Click the Add new folder button to specify a folder as the search path of media server. Then click the Browse button to select the folder to share and click Apply. The folder will appear in the table where you can add it or delete it. You can also choose Auto-Scan and set the interval for automatic scanning here in this drop-down list. 
If you do it, the media server will search shared folders automatically. When you create a shared folder, you can visit this page to see its name, file system type, path, and delete it if necessary by clicking on the corresponding button. The maximal number of shared folders is 6. If you want to share a folder and you already have 6 folders on the list, you can delete one of them and create another one. Connecting a printer to the router You can see there are settings for the print server, and it means that you can also connect a printer accessible by all devices within your network. Let's have a closer look at how to connect a printer to a router with a USB cable. This method has certain advantages over using a shared printer. The printer will be connected directly to the router, and there is no need to have a computer running all the time in order to be able to print something. To begin with, turn off the printer and the router. Plug one end of the USB cable into the printer and the other into the router. Turn the router on, and after some time, turn the printer on as well. Go to the web interface of your router, open the tab USB settings, print server, to check if the connected printer is displayed here. The server status should be online, and if it's offline, click Start. There might be one more issue. The router may be unable to recognize your printer properly. In this case, consult the user manual for the router. Your printer model might not be supported. Uh, however, you will still have some options to try. Most likely, updating the router's firmware could help you. You can watch one of our videos to see how to do it properly, and you can find the link in the description. The newer version of the firmware may have support for your specific device. Configuring a printer from PC. Is it possible? If the printer is displayed correctly in the web interface of your router, move on to configuring printer options on your computer. I will show it with the example of Windows 10. Open Settings Devices Devices and Printers Click Add a printer and choose The printer that I want isn't listed. Tick Add a printer using a TCP IP address or host name and click Next. From the drop down list, select TCP IP device and set the IP address of your router. This is the same address you have used to open its web interface. Click Next again. The computer will start detecting the port, so you will have to wait a little bit. Select device type as custom and move on to settings. Set LPR protocol, give any queue name and click OK to confirm your choice. Next. At this stage, select the device driver. You can choose the manufacturer and the model from the list. Alternatively, you can click on Windows Update. Wait for the list of available devices to appear and choose it from there. You can also download the driver from the manufacturer's official website. Then click Have Disk and give the path to the folder where you have extracted the driver. If you have already installed this device before, you'll be asked what driver version you'd like to use. Choose Replace the current driver and click Next. If necessary, rename it. The printer setup is complete. When you see the message that you have successfully added the printer, print a test page. You will have to repeat these steps on every computer and laptop of your home network to make printing possible from any of them. If this method doesn't work and you can't connect the printer or there are errors while printing the test page, try downloading a special utility. USB Printer Controller. Go to the official website of your router and choose Support – Download Center. Specify your router model and choose its hardware version. Choose utility below and download it, then install and run it. In the Programs window, you will see your router and the printer. Right-click on the printer and choose Set Auto Connect Printer, tick the box and click Apply. 
Now you can open any document and try printing it. The configuration process is over. And that is all for now. I hope you find this video useful. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Leave comments to ask questions. Thank you for watching. Good luck!